2XKO Saga is over, MK1 Chaos Reign story details, and uh, we got some EWC Tekken 8 coming up. Welcome, guys. This is Double Tap. This is a podcast dedicated to everything and anything in the fighting game community. I'm, of course, your host, Crash, and with me, I've got my awesome assist with me to go along with this episode this week. We've got Meza in the building. Yo, yo. We've got Static G. What's up? And, of course, the man, Myth Legend, is holding this show together and keeping us in line got ja. you know i've been thinking that like my intro needs more energy and i was like this week i'm gonna have it but then i couldn't come up with anything so next week y'all next week next week next week there you go there you go <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so welcome welcome y'all uh yeah man uh we got uh we got some, we got some stuff to get into man we got besides uh what i said earlier we got some gameplay to definitely jump onto we got some characters to break down but let's get into some 2xko the finale the omega really of uh of the alpha lab the uh, today it's actually being recorded right now on the uh 19th for some of us here three quarters of the show technically the 20th for me uh and uh yeah the the alpha lab is on its last legs we've got i think it's at this point right now less than 24 hours before it goes or just like just barely over 24 if it's if it's happening at i think 10 cst or 9 cst time uh yeah so nine pacific but still it doesn't matter it's already done if you're listening to our voices yeah if you're hearing this it's over it's over you you've lost the race um but we did get a chance to you know kind of break down a lot of our impressions on the 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 overall state of the game uh but i figured we we could take this week is to kind of get the last our last little points because it's about to be let go and for from what rise said we're gonna go underground for quite a little bit of time uh, so we don't know when we're going to come back and be able to press some buttons. So I figured this would be a good opportunity for us to kind of get our last little licks in as to how we feel about the game or anything you want to point out that maybe you didn't think about last week. Um, I'll start. No problem. I've got uh, I've got a few things that I feel like could be really on the side, more on the side of being worked on. Um, I think overall watching, watching this all this time of people playing tournaments that have gone on watching you guys like more specifically static and Meza, you guys playing and all that i'm just like kind of been really taking a note as to what i've been really looking at not just like literally visually but like how the games are being played out because you know right now what's this what's the standard it's like two out of three uh yes. rounds or like first of two in the rounds two out of three in the set and that's it I, I i think that's solid right i think i think that's a solid pace but Honestly, I, one of the things that come up to me is is defense, man. Defense in this game needs work. I think that's been kind of a universal. I've been I've been asking. I've been jumping around Twitch chats, talking to other streamers and other players, um, and just been like, "Yo, what 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 are we feeling about this? What are we feeling about that?" Just to kind of get a consensus. And defense seems to be one of the go to subjects. I feel like the game is very offense heavy, which is fine when you have more defensive tools to 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 kind of fight against that. And I feel like the tools that we have right now are just like not there. Like to put it in perspective, um, one of the first things you can think of when you're trying to get someone off of you is like, you have, we have two options. There's like, you can get off of them with retreat guard, which has some, you know, some issues, right? Low pokes kind of beat it out, right? When you do some Gatlings that can reach, you kind of get low poked because it's susceptible to lows and, um, and grabs as well. But the other part is is push block. That one needs that one needs resources though. You need meter for that. Huge. So like uh, you need meter for that, and like the fact that you start the matches without meter, like that's just offense heavy. Like whoever's the player that like kind of just starts steamrolling very early on, just keeps pressing W, is kind of being an advantage because there's no way your opponent's gonna be able to get them, you know, get you off of them outside of a burst, right? Or like maybe a good retreat guard, but even then you have to be in mid screen for that. Uh I don't disagree with the push block uh, concept right now because it's different in a game like BB Tag where pushing full screen is fine and you can go back to neutral and then you have a lot of neutral skips, but some characters just don't have that in this game. Mm -hmm. And then a lot probably just do. Um, like, I'll be honest, Braum doesn't have a neutral skip, but like characters like Yasuo, characters like Ari, Echo, they could just skip neutral if they want to, right? So... I don't think push block is bad necessarily. You have to pick and choose where you use it. I just think that with the assist calling, there needs to be a better form of punishment. It feels like every time you try to go to punish, like you could push block. Let's say somebody does medium heavy, you push block the medium, you go to punish the heavy. They're calling assist. 
probably yeah, 90% to cover, right? Yeah, but like something like Ari, a character like Ari trying to hit Yasuo, let's say, and Ari, you're not going to get it even if you do a stand heavy. So I feel like it's not so much the push block, it's more like the height of some assist. The the feels like almost the timing and of assist being called feel invulnerable. Almost like there's no way to stop them sometimes from just being called. Uh, that's my personal opinion. But because I know you want to talk about Perry. Well, it, mm-hmm. um, well, that's the thing. Like, it's almost going to become. Well, if it stays this way, it's going to become what Dragon Ball Fighters became. There are certain moves that you need to either deflect or or parry or even advance guard because right now advance guard feels like wild um what's the one uh deflect shield in uh guilty Guilty gear Gear. because you can cancel those moves into another move uh even on whiff and not not necessarily whiff but because you hit something and then it bounced you back and you're still able to cancel and keep your momentum moving forward i'm thinking Mm -hmm. obviously darius who is like the strongest guy <laughs> i mean he can uh full screen super you it feels like even if it pushes back you know yeah so, he's always he's always a threat he's got he's yeah. got really so good range it's uh i i understand your defensive things but there's three big defensive tools you have burst as well on on any situation it can be yeah, even on offensive it's just weird and, bro mm-hmm. and even then burst like i feel like burst is underwhelming yeah it can be like counter like too. The, like yeah, well, no, I, I feel the opposite. I don't know. Like, from what I've seen, I don't see enough, like, burst baits in okay. this game. Like, there's, Ooh. like, burst burst is consistent, which is good. But, like, that, that means now, like, it is never a way to counterplay it. Like, so, outside of you maybe switching to an assist, to block. like, right when you it block happens. block it and they wall bounce. Well, no, yeah, no, no. but I'm saying, like, how many, how many like, jump cancelable normals or, or, like, you know, I'm thinking on Guilty Gear. I'm like, I know where my burst bait or burst safe areas are so i can react when i see it or if i anticipate it i know i can like pre you know preemptively like 5s and then like jump cancel it because i'm like if i hit they i'm like i I feel this player is going to burst here which because when you're right like cool i get i get to get rewarded for making that call out but in here like whenever i see it i feel like it's an accident half the time no, so I, I think if you if you watch any of like how Super Noon played, he was able to bait burst like a thousand times. It, it's actually insane how many times he he baited burst. But what I think is the problem I've universally seen is the routing for combos don't always allow for bursting, and I think that's where the yeah. major problem is to some degree. I, I just I, I don't know. I just think that's where we we would have to start. Because everybody has to have something universal to be able to like it. I don't want people being able to jump cancel off of like stand medium, uh, stuff like that. But there has to be like a jump cancelable button. Or, yeah, because like even in B yeah, you can jump they're, cancel everything. Yeah, true. No, true. Well, um, this I don't want to make it. Don't want to open up Pandora's box that much with that. It's just like I just want to be able to 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 actually call it out. Because I mean, otherwise burst is just guaranteed. I'm like, which is like also not a bad thing, but like you just once again, you're you, there's no counterplay to that, which but on an you know kind of sucks. Airborne opponent Yasuo is able to do crouch H jump cancel into things, only on airborne opponent though. So like yeah, that's just airborne. airborne yeah. yeah, and that's one character. Right. Some some characters do kind of have abilities to to burst bait a, a bit more often than others. Well, and once again, this is a small roster we're, we're messing with at the moment, but. Um, it's not a universal kind of counterplay that's available to everyone, which inherently will instantly, you know, not to say it's going to make or break, but there's definitely going to be a difference in power levels and in capabilities during a match between that, if that's the case. It, it, it's actually funny because I just went to go test it. I wanted to see if I was crazy. Uh, someone like Ari, who doesn't really do her combos by launching you right from the start, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. it does suck because I was also looking to hopefully be able to do like say medium heavy into parry, right? And I do want to kind of dive into parry because I think parry's a mm, parry's kind of a bad mechanic right now. It's great and bad at the same time. And the only reason why I feel that way is particularly because sometimes you'll get parry, and it feels like that was a good move to parry, and then you're like, well, I guess I'm not punishing it because I can't do dash something, right? Whereas yeah. some characters can just be like. Oh, I parried one button because I reach naturally like Darius 
or you know Yasuo, characters like that. So it's a little yeah. frustrating. Characters that, with weapons, who would have guessed yeah. they have better range? I mean, don't get me wrong, Ariasa has you know S one, which is her fireball, but it's not always yeah. the right Bro, speed. S two is that John. Yeah, but they're not always the right speed. That's the problem. Like the the yeah. biggest problem is there are moves that are generally not able to punish that are not punishable when they should be. So, and there's safe supers that shouldn't be safe at all. I, I just think there's a. Before I get into that, I just think that <laughs> sticking on the defensive mechanics. I think that parry. What they should do is, me personally, I've yet to use down parry because I think that's just ridiculous to try to do. Unless somebody I honestly is, forgot down parry. Was there's a, a yeah, I, the down I, parry. I think it's dead almost unless you're unless you're retreating a lot and somebody's gonna try to bait for a low. But they're doing like a slow low, and it's not like a, it's because it's ABC. So it's not like it's slow enough. I don't know if Dari, it's slow enough. Darius players love I've, that down low. That down but, L. They love that, John. But that's the thing. I feel like crouching parry is kind of pointless. So just give us stand parry, parry's lows. Like, I, I don't understand why. We, maybe it's less negative because it's a so low. You, but I so don't have a like a standard parry like Street Fighter Six, where it's just it doesn't matter. It just it will absorb whatever. At this rate, o outside of, yeah. outside of a grab or outside of a, 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 a well, no, it could do super as well. It's like yeah. grab, grab's the only thing, right? Yeah, grab's the only thing. I, I feel like we're at a point where parry is a great mechanic for the game, but it's poorly in, it's poorly put in the game. That I think that there's it's still enough. I still have to remember. We still have to remember yeah, that it's, it's yeah. underused. Big, it's thank very you. Very underused. Big, Big, yeah, big asterisk there. This is it, I, like we don't expect to kind of break, even though information is going super rapid. It's got his hashtag, 2 xko hashtag, whatever for your tech and all that. And it's and it's already developing very fast. And I and that Riot's definitely happy with that. It's still very unexplored. Like, so everything we're talking is definitely with a grain of salt. Like, once the game is actually out for a much more extended amount of time, and we kind of really break because no one's. No one's focusing on parry mechanics right now. Let's let's be fucking um, real. So, like like no one's like literally just labbing parry. I, I'll, There's I'll, nobody. I'll put it. There's this way. nobody. We're at a point right now. If we would have had another week, I think in another tournament or two. We would have seen Perry become a little bit more useful because there's so many mechanics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, I, it, yeah. In they, terms they, of hierarchy, that's like that. That labbing is like not you, not up there. Right you now. only use Perry for very specific situations, which makes sense. Supers that you don't want to get chipped out for because you get your meter back. It just felt like, or if somebody does a hard jump in, you're like, I'm parrying that, right? So it's like mm. those are the only times outside of like specific strings that have breaks in between them. Such as Ilaoi's uh, S1, 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 or Yasuo's, uh, even his, some of his strings have uh, bricks in it. Those are mm -hmm. times where people might try to bury or like even Darius, but it's, it, it's just to the point where parry just feels like a tool for specific moves and sometimes making the right read, which is scary in this game because you make the wrong read, you're staying there forever at this period. Okay. Yeah. On, on that note, actually, with what you were uh, just saying, like you feel like it's a lot, like, um, do you think, uh, do you, one, one thing I actually wanted to bring up uh, was the diffuses. One of the things I would like, so we were talking about the defensive mechanics and really where they're standing. But for me, I want to just pitch this idea. Call me crazy. I know we kind of slightly, we kind of slightly talked about it or maybe even said it like as a joke. But what do y'all think about like a, a fuse that gives you classic inputs? Right, the classic inputs. I think we've said this before. Like, yeah, it'd be cool if they did something like that, where you actually get, you know, your quarter, quarter circles, um, charges, whatever, you know, DPS, all that stuff. But you get like um, a scaling difference as well with that to kind of reward the execution. No, I know, it's, I know, it's kind of crazy to say considering how much fucking damage is in this game. TOD is already like out the wazoo, right? And we're only like barely scratching the surface with like double down. And all right with some of these like easy to go to like T uh, uh, DHC uh, 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 supers right um, and just completely melting life bars. Um, I, I I just thought about it I was like man a fuse but that gives you classic controls but gives you like a different kind of scaling. Like I wonder if that would be something that kind of like fits in the in this product that Riot Games is trying to build where it's like literally a, you know they're trying to graduate you from beginner all the way to you know like season vet in fighting games but with just like breaking down that barrier 
Like, what are, you, what are y'all thoughts on that? Well, before you do that, speaking of, like, I, one thing I do want to know is we have a lot of people on our Discord now, or not to say a lot, but more people on our Discord kind of coming in, stating that they're new to fighting games. What is a DHC for those who don't know? Oh, okay. All right. So <laughs> DHC is for delayed hyper combo, meaning basically when one character does a super, you have the ability to then, you know, call another super from another character. We see it in Marvel all the time, right? Like Iron Man does a proton cannon. You can have Ryu come in and do his beam afterwards and it will combo. You can just do it within any time in that animation that is happening. Hence the delay, right? Hyper combo meaning the, the super. Um, so that's what DHC stands for. Um, and that is your fighting game vocabulary of the day for this episode. Um, so yeah, so that that's that's what I was thinking when it comes to like double down, which is basically the equivalent to that in 2XKO where you're allowed to use, you know, both characters have their own meter, so you can have Ari do a super, or rather let's be more specific, Alawi can do a super, and then like Ari can do her super and then you know chain them after one after the other and they just combo and you just get like way more damage because you get the cash out no and and oh and what was your question again <laughs> wait wait no Dinner. no i well, know yeah, what your hello. question was that i'm still answering the question from before would this be like was... inputs that's that input oh, oh yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> see he even knows say, so i'd say no only because that pulse would i'm sorry it pulses the other fuse that fuse would actually interfere with the other player's fuse as well. Awesome. So that's why that's why I'm not really oh. a big fan of pulse because you both have to pick the same fuse. Oh, if you're in got you, got you, yeah. got you. Well, and that's I mean, not the only reason why, but I feel like there should just maybe be not even a if it's not a fuse, then maybe a um, sort of like normal simple type of choose for that player's controllers. Yeah, just so gotcha, that gotcha. you can get rid of the S1, S2. And you can macro something else that might be on the six button layer. Yeah, you know what's so funny? I'm surprised that it was uh, hasn't even been talked as an option right now, or or because you know who uh, Injustice did that, and yeah. that I, I don't honestly remember anyone getting mad about it. Uh, like, or no, I'm, I'm using it. Yeah, I used it. I actually enjoyed it better inputs, because, right? like, as much, yeah, as much, because yeah, it was too. like MK, MK style, right? Which is like, you know, back, forward, and a button is like a fireball or something, or that was like Scorpion's uh, spear. Oh, well, yeah. if you changed it to traditional inputs, it would be a fireball half motion. Circle. Or, or a half fireball. circle yeah. or something, right? You did and it's Harley fine. With, with alternate I, controls, right? Yes. So you had a half controls. circle, square, and square. I had, I had the half circle in order for her to do her little, her little, uh, uh, not her, well, yeah, for her pistols was a quarter circle. But yeah, like I didn't see anyone actually complain. They were just like, whether you want it or not. Once again, putting it in the hands of the players on whether or not they want that versus making it like a mechanic you unfortunately say enforce and give them no choice in right um damn there we go that's some that's some great feedback i should i should i should write that on the uh, on the survey i think we've always talked about how games should just do that in general to yeah. give that option uh one it opens up a bigger door i mean look at street fighter right street fighter does that a lot they with their modern controllers and stuff like that but for me i i definitely yes i agree that giving the option of controls being I can do my inputs or not. Totally fine. Because quite frankly, it's really easy for a lot of players who've been playing games for fighting games for ever. Right. So you have someone like, let's say we'll use Chris G as an example. I'm pretty sure it'd be easy for him to be like, why would I want to do down this? Because it interferes with down, down super. Right. Or yeah. something like that, which I do. F sometimes I do hate it. I, I have a move with Elawi when I do down S2 or 2S2. This is a notation for you guys. Uh, when I do that, I sometimes get down down where I get input buffered and I get super. super. The most unsafe I have, super. <laughs> I have a terrible answer to that. You might hate me for it. Execution. Skill issue. No, which, which, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I will say I do agree. I think that's a skill issue, which can yeah. always be fixed on the back end for a player, right? right but for right. someone who's new, who's trying to get used to that, it might be disruptive for them, right? So inputs right. might actually be a little bit better. Th didn't so, 
hold up. Was it right? Skullgirls? No, Skullgirls had the inputs you wanted for your One assist. wanted assist. for your assist. Yeah. God. Yeah, you get to mm. That was a good, that was really good. I still mechanic. think, I still think they had the best I, assist system yep. to be perfectly honest. Yeah. So the 2XKO Alpha Lab at this point, by the time you guys are hearing this, uh, is done. Uh, make sure to do the survey. There is a survey that comes with this. Give Riot all that feedback. They have been very, pretty much transparent in saying how they want to listen to you guys or they are listening to us they are looking they are retweeting they are answering they're doing improv videos to just be like yo we get it and here are things that we want to fix here are things that are not intentional make sure to put in that survey let them know it's the best way you can uh you can of course uh get get your voice heard there so with that with 2x uh ko it's gonna be kind of out for a little bit uh, until the next i don't know beta lab charlie lab whatever they're gonna call it so don't go anywhere, guys. We're going to be taking a quick break. When we come back, we're going to be jumping in on some NK1 action. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right. Uh, 2XKO is done. It's over. It's the Omega. It's the end for now. With that, let's jump into what okay, technically kind of a, ta a tag fight. It's more of an assist fighter. But uh, MK1 still sounds very weird for me to say that out loud because I keep trying to say 12. We got a new trailer, a story trailer and gameplay combo going on with Cyrex. This is specifically a Cyrex trailer. Uh, this got dropped uh, on the official Twitter page and it was a, it's about three minutes, three minutes of basically some in-game play for Cyrex as well as a glimpse to once again, the story. Uh, this was early parts of this was was leaked early on actually between like Sector and Cyrex and it seems like it was proven here on the trailer that like Sector is like the commanding officer over Cyrex and all and there's like some sort of attack that's imminent that's what's going on these motherfuckers uh Bihan the original Sub-Zero the current one who is gonna be destined to be Noob Sabot we already know this we've already seen it in the trailer that's not a spoiler uh they're gonna crash they're gonna do a wedding crash at Scorpions wedding or you know quagliang in this universe uh and uh that was already flags for me because i was like fuck dude his wife does not his family just does not Doesn't catch a break in well. whatever <laughs> whatever timeline bro it's like a nexus event it's like it has to happen it's like uncle ben it's like it's like when a new spider-man movie gets announced it's like uncle ben's like oh god damn it i think that's his ending I gotta go get shot at least it's not always yeah. the same yeah. one <laughs> yeah i think that's but, his ending in um in, in this in game, M I believe, right? Yeah. Or was that 11? Yeah, where he where, where he meets her and stuff. Yeah, it's right. in this one. But that she keeps uh, that's dying why, throughout in every story. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's kind of a trip. But uh, yeah, so it, we basically get a look into more, once again, Cyrex specifically. Um, and where, you know, where she's going to be like, where her relationship, relationship is with Scorpion as well. Seems like they were friends. Um, they clearly knew each other because they were all from the same clan. Uh, but it, right now, at least this portion, because I think this is going to be more of the beginning part of the DLC story, because we've seen that it kind of is expanding past that, especially as uh, we see eventually new, you know, become, uh, or Sub-Zero becomes new. Uh, we kind of see the relationship between like Cyrex and I don't know, man, this trailer gives away a lot. Like the story, I'm like, OK, Cyrex is clearly going to go against Bihan. It just makes sense. It's the only character here that is going like, we're going to attack at the wedding. Like at the like nobody like we might win this, but like nobody's gonna like be happy. <laughs> nobody's fucking with us. Like, like, like not in a good way. Like yeah, no one's like you're gonna you're gonna attack somebody on their wedding like that. Like that that's just ruthless, and that's just just to show the like that Bihan really is like like it was like the corruption that turned him into Doom Sarah that made him like a villain. Like he was always like this kind of bad guy. Yeah. Well, what's another another interesting thing is that this is just part of the Ling Kuei story. Because there's a whole other story happening with in the other trailers about uh, Havoc and with his Havoc new, and yeah. all. So this is just like <laughs> a chapter in the Link yeah. storyline, it seems. So we'll see how this. Uh, but oh, my God. Gameplay. <laughs> yes. Gameplay. So besides that, because, uh, you know, the, the story will we'll obviously get into it more when it actually does come out. It's going to be fun to get all the details. Uh, the gameplay. Yes, we got extensive look at Cyrex and damn. Super cool. Bringing a <laughs> lot to the table. Wall running ability, which we were seeing in the in the in the actual cinematic first. I was like, oh, that's cute. Uh, then I realized, oh my god, they Im they implemented into the game where she could like run up, I guess, the edge, the corner of the stage, and just like come down. Kind of like like do you remember like interactable certain interactables for speed characters in MKX oh, yeah, yeah. used to do that Even in certain Injustice stages, like well. the pit and all. 
Yes, and Justice, Justice yeah. as well. Like like Quickster characters uh, would do that, like Flash. Um, looks like they're like rehashing that, which was like interesting. Uh, bombs being off screen and a problem is not just a Takeda thing. This is clearly something that Cyrex can also do. You know, we kind of stated like Takeda was able to like do setups they might forget about. Like, looks like Cyrus can do the same thing. That homing uh, bomb rubbed me the wrong way, though. Bro, the Samus <laughs> Oran, like, when Morph Ball, like, bomb. That's all I could think of when I saw that. Like, EX, when you enhance it and it goes one way and it's like just, boop, it's like a Roomba from hell. Like, you want to get yeah. away from it. Uh, that was cool. And a Sub-Zero, a new Sub-Zero cameo ability. We got Good. the MK9 uh, Ice Parry ability back. Uh, I don't know if you remember that one, but it's like... Mm -hmm. like, it was very not utilized in MK9 for Cyber Sub Zero, but uh, it's it's in this game, so we're we're pulling uh, we're, we're pulling some deep cuts here. Should we expect more of that for this game, where they reutilize old uh, just I mean, moves? I'm, I mean, in why general? not? I mean, why not? It had some of the stuff just was, especially in like MKX. There was a lot of stuff just not played or not used. I wouldn't be surprised to see that. Maybe I guess MK11 because like. I don't know, man. I felt like MKX just had so much that just was like, mm. people were like, there's just too much to play in the game. And then, but not everything was viable, but still. It was just not like, everything was viable. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so they could However, it, but there were so many variations that once it was found, once something cheap was found, it got nerfed. So it was almost scary yeah. to find something new at that point. Because yeah. Predator was... Tournament. I mean, Tanya nerfed one variation. The, the next variation was even more busted. Like, yeah, those days. <laughs> oh, good, good times, good times. Good. NRS Curse is, is always creates some good content. Good thing about MK1 is how slow they've been updating the game. Yeah, so I don't know the other way around, bro. This might be your time. Like, like god damn. His face says no. Um, Gabe is not amused. I will not <laughs> touch that game with a 10 foot pole just because I was told even further that Fair does not make the game fun for anybody. Uh, oh, yeah, that's yeah all they say. have to like nerf. They have to yeah. nerf her already. But, uh, Kind of just talking on Cyrex, I actually like the kit more than anything. It looks like the most creative character in the game so far. Next to uh, like guest characters, obviously, because guest characters, you kind of do whatever you want almost. Cicada, Cicada's yeah. looking that way too. But go on. Yo, but hold up. The net though. I just want to bring this up. Oh, the yeah. net, net corner. That Oof. corner carry? Are you shitting me? Like Thank this character, like, like <laughs> I, by the end of the trailer, I was like, wow, these were so many crazy special moves. I'm like, yo, your buttons have to be ass if your buttons are not <laughs> Wait, ass you are about to everything. be the most op character no, like not even, i'm not, not joking negative startup like oh, like yeah it needs to be slow or something because you have because you have everything else yeah. i'm like if your buttons are not butt cheeks like it's a day one pick easy easy so if you pause at 102 she punishes the shadow kick with a I don't know, a spinning heavy kick, and I don't know what. Spinning roundhouse. Yeah. Because she can't. Because, no, no, I'm saying that's the startup you're talking about. That's the ass button. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It needs or to or she has a lot of highs and maybe like one or two yeah. minutes. Like, yeah, that's definitely that where the game could go. Or maybe not even a low starter. Who knows? But then the, the bombs could be the low starter. You get but, a knockdown, yeah, you the, set up the low, but then you also have exactly. assists. I think she'll be really good with a Cyrex assist doing a double net setup. Net into the corner and the move oh. into another net. <laughs> GG's. Can you, All right. Can you imagine? Hold up. Can you imagine someone that started playing MK1 and was tired of the Cyrex copter and left and oh, said, man. oh, let me come back to this DLC real quick. And like, are you shitting me? <laughs> I have to play against two of these motherfuckers now. <laughs> this game has gotten worse. <laughs> like, Yikes. do you have any idea the optics behind that? I would be so mad. I would be pissed. Mm. But... Uh, Hopefully she's not uh she's not she's not too too busted. I, I will say I like her fatal blow, right? Fatal blow. I like that. Uh, yeah. I like that a lot. I think it's very cool. <laughs> so I'm gonna say it's just very cool. Cause when Yo. I ooh, when I looked at that fatality, I was like, get that shit though fuck out of here yeah that, that fatality was, was ass bro that it should have been the other way so around simple like like i felt like that was so just underwhelming yeah for me it was just like pop like I, like you could have just done like the little cartoony like like when they popped the the johnny cage head off because i was like that didn't like what like I, I just it just didn't feel right or just didn't look right for me and then like she does the soccer kick back i'm like and then luke kang did a luke, luke kang did a better version of that shit in shaolin monks bro that shit was fire if you're gonna soccer I, kick you better make it the titus i'm sorry the jex shot 
The jet <laughs> shot or something. Make it dope. It, that was just like so underwhelming. And then we get a little tease of the of the bee animality for her, which I was like, oh yeah. Which I also forgot animalities were coming, and I was like, right. I got reminded. So good on them for uh, for adding it to the edit. Not a shark, I was like, oh yeah. Can I can I ask? Yeah, Cyrus serious... is a shark in MK3. Let, let me ask a serious question though. Like, is this going to is this really going to save the game from slowly burning out? when there's it's so slow when all these characters keep coming out they're so cool but then something else happens and now people are like i don't want to really play mk anymore well here's the one thing there's the price added to this the only thing in this free is the animalities there's a price added to it but you're getting sector and cyrex at the same time i think noob as well i'm not too sure because he's also be in the story yeah, mode. should be noob yeah, yeah you get all um, three of them and then the three other guest characters coming through soon you're getting a lot, but again, they haven't even announced what cameos are coming. But again, it's also a sixty or fifty dollar price tag. I think it is. Oh, it's another yeah, game. And I, and and the other problem is, unfortunately, there's also other like modes in the game that are actually still technically they're grayed out right now. Like online tra- uh, training mode or online practice has been grayed out. Like it, it is not online. Like you, they haven't gotten to it yet. Warrior Shrine as well, which they've talked about them working on it, but it's like when like so there's certain aspects of the game that are still not haven't been supported yet i mean it might come online with this dlc we don't know 100 percent yet they they're obviously just marketing the dlc because that's you know it's dlc it's it's gonna make some those residuals back or, or some auxiliary uh income back for for it um it's an easy sell versus just like the modes themselves i don't but, know man this is feeling uh, uh, this is feeling I don't know like about a, saving but this is like feeling like an mmo like we'll update as we go and let you guys uh at least see that it's coming i don't really think that's good for fighting games especially when the bar for dlc has always been like the maximum maybe 30 dollars uh for like characters and maybe extra stuff 60 is pretty steep considering I mean, we did, we did the numbers. We did the like numbers 80. before. We did the numbers. I mean, for six characters at 60 plus story, you're looking at $10, $7 a character, that's something a like lot. that. But it depends on how many hours you're getting out of story as well. But right? the, like that's, that's the other but big is thing. Is this not the same as them saying, okay, and I'm going to harp back to this. This is like, is this not the same as Street Fire Cross Tekken where the characters are already there? No, the characters aren't already there to my knowledge. So they're not even in the story? No, 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 not the story. Like, yeah, they're in the story, but I thought you meant like they were like already like hard coded since like season oh, no, no, one no, no. or something. I'm just like saying, that. I, like, thought, no, no, I like, thought because they were in the story, they're kind of already like have been slightly built, at least mostly. I don't know. That's what I'm afraid of. Well, hold on. I mean, just the reality of the situation is like, even if they, let's say, because even if they had the characters on disc since the beginning, those characters were only created because they expected to sell them at some point, right? Like mm-hmm. the characters were approved for creation, or the character account was approved because they're like, okay, well, we're gonna put this out in year one. We're gonna have the game plus the D, you know, the price for you know the season pack, and then next year we're also gonna expect to make X amount of dollars off of the next season pack or the next year pack, whatever Mortal Kombat is calling it, right? Those characters, years. Ed Boon said for years, for years, for yeah. years, they're supporting those, those characters only exist because they expect to make money off. So they could have made the characters they last year, the year before. Before that, the, the very first year, but the reason they exist is because at some point they expected to sell them, you know, uh, you know, separately. Uh, I guess yep. I'm just like a little kind of my breath. My breath has been taken a little bit just because I was expecting like at that rate, don't you just do free DLC for those characters and just kick out a forty dollar instead of sixty? Because I don't know how many people are really going to drop. Si- Maybe there's a lot. Maybe I don't know because. I'm hearing a lot of people are just really uncomfortable with MK1 right now where it's at. Why would the Shit. why would the DLC be free? Why would anything be free when it costs them money to make not these all characters? Of like, not all of it. So fighting, I mean, at this point in history, I, I would say fighting games are live services. You know, at this point, like the way they get updated, the way you kind of you get characters over mm-hmm. time, you're just not paying for battle passes all the time. But it is technically speaking a live service game, and they're expecting uh, longer you know, longer tails on it. So, I mean, I, I mean, honestly, 
I feel because I understand what you're saying. Man. I'm not saying you're wrong. Like the, the, yeah. the, the, I, uh, you're not the only person who said something about the price. But I think the price is easier to swallow if people didn't have as many problems as they currently do with the game. That's why I I think firmly like if they don't get this balance right, if they don't get the balance right within I would say by October, <laughs> November, mm. then we're gonna start seeing. I, then I'm like okay. We're might gonna start seeing some some real problems because you know the my defense of them has been that because sales have been so good, they just stayed on their you know their roadmap, right? Well, this is the year two roadmap. They should have already they should have taken a lot of the input that they got over the last year and started putting it into the balance patch. Like obviously taking the input that they got, but also looking at the data they have and figuring out how they want the game to play and meet somewhere in the middle, hopefully, you know something that the players like and if we don't see that then i'm like okay they're, they're kind of fucking up now but yeah. that's what i really think it really depends on because players are not going to mind because well, is, is it 50 dollars or 60 bucks for the dlc it's 60 bucks right 60 dollars. people don't mind spending money as long as they feel it's worth it so if the Sounds balance like is right and if the single player content or the story content is long enough then i think they're not going to have a problem with that price I don't know what the yep. price was for MK11. Uh, what was it? The the expansion? But I thought the story was dope. Just adding but Shang Tsung story. story carried it. It yep. was so Shang good. Shang yeah. Shiva. It's actually, it's uh, actually, that's a pretty high yeah. bar. Maybe that's the other reason why people are a little bit critical of this. Because the last DLC we did get on MK11 set the bar pretty high. It was actually yep. pretty good. Yep. Um, but, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see. But actually, one more question I do have to ask you guys, not only just my uh, awesome host here, but you guys, the listeners, do you care about the Cyrix sector changes? Like, do you give a shit whether it's the, the gender bending or what the, the character's uh, like direction that they're putting them in at the moment? Because there seems to be a lot of... Discourse. problems with it discourse discourse yeah. about it discourse in the discord not our discord um yeah our discord people discord. are cool yeah our, our discord guys are awesome <laughs> what are you gonna um, be but yeah let, let, let us know <laughs> let, let us know if you actually care about these these changes between sector and cyrex uh for the game uh we'll be posting up that poll on all social media platforms as well as on our discord so our awesome discord members can get involved make sure you guys get involved at uh as well mash.gg forward slash uh discord or excuse me, double tap dot gg for slash discord. All right, so with that, let's move on to another WB property. I didn't mean to laugh at that just because of the stuff Don't we've covered lie. before, but I did. You know, it is what it is. Um, maybe. Uh, multiverses. Uh, we had a Beetlejuice gameplay, or rather a move list a breakdown, because I didn't know this until I I, I found out the, the video, but they do um, multiverses. I don't know if they just started doing it. Uh, but they are currently doing um, the equivalent to like the combat cast, like where they actually are sitting down and showing updates and stuff like that. And that's where the gameplay uh, came from. I wasn't aware of it at all uh, until the, the the tweets went out. I was like, oh, would you look at that? So we had a breakdown on uh, on Beal Juice. That's only saying it twice. Hopefully I don't say it the third time. And uh, yeah, his uh, his entire kit is actually fun i think i'm gonna put it right now that i think he is probably the best animated character in this whole game yeah the whole thing like, is hilarious man in the whole game like you know what you what you can tell a lot about like you know not to say effort or anything because i think all the characters look awesome and, I, and they're definitely putting a lot of effort blood sweat and tears passion into the game but man when some of these guys are really just like in it like they are just like locked in um, it shows, do you and Beetlejuice is one of those characters that I think we'll, we'll see that on. Do you think it's just because he's like the in between? He's kind of like a mixture of cartoonish, but he's also realism a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like like like, like, like they fits. like like they were able to mix kind of like that that Tim Burton style, right? Like of of what the character is with like the cartooniness, the zaniness of it that he did in like other in, in animated series and stuff like that. And it just, and then, you know, make it into a fighter. Like, it just works. It just works. Uh, so we had a, uh, an overall just show, you know, just a showcase on the character. Got a couple of notes here for me. Um, he's a little bit of a install character. Uh, when I mean install character, that means that you need to, you need to do something in order to basically unlock other aspects of the character. 
Uh, in this case, there is a, um, a move, his, uh, his up special, uh, which he actually does a, uh, a, a, a beetle, like he kicks like an actual beetle. And if the beetle hits, he now has a floating beetle with him. And that actually alters certain moves, or certain other moves that he has in his kit, which is like really cool. One being uh, his, uh, I think it's his side air or side special where he actually can like float. Now with the beetle, he actually can like float up and then also pick another direction. So now mobility is, is now different, uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, I think the other one that gets affected it's just generally the beetle buddy, which is yeah, the, the special, the ground up special, uh, because you can actually do like more damage uh, after he has it. Uh, but yeah, the special air up special, excuse me, is what uh, what lets him do that mobility. Uh, yeah, the other moves that he has that are really cool, like the chalk. Uh, what is it? The the toast with the most, which is like where he just kind of scribbles on a chalk done bomb, and you can actually like hold it to make the fuse longer, so you can kind of change the timing on it. Call back to the movie because they have to draw like a chalk door in it. For those that have seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But everything else in his kit, it literally is just nothing but a, a movie reference, which is awesome. Uh, his uh, neutral air, uh, I think it's his neutral air special or his neutral air uh, uh, a move, like just standard button press is, yeah, his standard button press got to stay sharp where he has spikes all over. I'm like, that's that's kind of be ridiculous because he's just going to be a hitbox floating in the air. That's going to be gross. Um, and uh, yeah, all his other moves, uh, the, you know, get a load of this where he does the, 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 the to this day, we still don't know what face <laughs> he makes, but it's enough to scare like the, the main characters in his movie. Um, it's especially, it's actually his neutral ground and air neutral, uh, which is pretty dope. And yeah, man, like the character is just so well animated. Uh, everything about him just is, is just the characters, like such an essence of the character is especially a special air down the um, where he actually summons the door and the sandworm comes out and like dodges it. I was like, that is so much. That is so yeah. much. But I'm like, it's also like right. Like it also makes sense. So like I'm not taken away from it. But I think he's he's gonna be pretty potent, especially his passive. His passive, I think, is also incredibly creative. Um, his passive ability when he's actually playing with the team member is that like when allies pass by him, or I guess when you cross paths at, at any point, uh, your ally now has boxing gloves. I don't know if it does more damage or anything, <laughs> but it's because yeah, it's just real. Just so now you have boxing gloves. But when you hit your when you now your ally hits their opponent three times, uh, it makes. Beetlejuice just instantly teleport to them <laughs> and do the uh, get a load of this, which is that face animation right on them. I was like, that's pretty sick. That's like so, that's so lore specific or character specific. And then they turned it into a gameplay mechanic. I'm like, that. You guys Who are thought of that? How dare you guys are a creative yeah. <laughs> bunch. Like, that's awesome. That is, that is awesome. Um, but yeah, so we got a breakdown of them. Like I said, he looks amazing. His animations are great. I think he is the best animated character in the game. And he looks potent. Like, these moves are not, like, to be, you know, taken lightly. Like, he, him having mobility in the game is going to be really strong. I think that passive is really great, especially when you're obviously playing in teams. Um, maybe some stubby normals, like some stubby, you know, side ground buttons and all. But past that, I think he, he could actually be pretty, pretty strong, depending on how his combo route goes because i feel like it's going to be a little little tricky a little tricky with this kit because it's a little all over the place but that might just be also par for the course to kind of keep it to you know keep it on on character the entire way through uh yeah so he's going to be coming out uh actually by the time you guys are hearing this should be out now august 20th he'll be out and live so we're going to be seeing some tech we're going to be seeing some combos we're going to be seeing how well he works on uh, uh with the rest of the game uh, so yeah, let's, uh, one quick, actually one quick topic to go move on to, uh, Marvel. You know, we talk about our tag fighters here, uh, or more specifically the Marvel's Capcom collection, uh, has gotten a date sort of, uh, there've been some early, early leaks, uh, that actually happened. I think this was, I think over a week ago now, uh, unfortunately got posted. You love the internet. You love Amazon. You love it when somebody just does their job too well. Or maybe put the wrong value, the wrong date down, and something goes live before it was intended to. But we do have a potential date. Still want to say potential because for all we know, maybe this could be a placeholder date. Could get shifted, could get delayed. 
Uh, but apparently the Capcom, uh, the Marvel's Capcom Fighting Collection is releasing on November 22nd this year. Just so, in time to beat your cousins up. Yeah, just in time to just fucking get lit right at Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving and your cousins are, it's about to get, it's about to get real. It's about to get real. Um, and also just in time for Christmas too. So that's going to be, that's going to be a good old time. Uh, but hopefully, like I said, this is the actual time for it once again the the date could shift it could be like maybe their first uh you know capcom's first get, uh like kind of pseudo date that they wanted to release on they might change it this leak might also have affected it but depends if they want to hit that uh uh i think their fiscal year would still be going on there i would assume so it's during christmas it's kind of the busiest time they'd want to get those numbers out it kind of fits um but we'll just have to see uh when they actually decide to release it i don't know what's taking them so long i don't know about you guys but like not putting a date is kind of like weird to me. Well, they have they have it on multiple consoles. That's my only fear why they're taking so long, so that they can appropriately make sure that things are kind of playing properly on all of them, versus like you have all these different ones and then you got to fix each and every one as you go. That's really difficult. I feel. Yeah, that's the but only thing the I can think. Time, of. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm really trying to figure out as to like what what could be the reason. Uh, unless you know, for me, tinfoil hat. I'm like, man, are they just trying to fucking keep this on side with something else that might be coming? I don't know. Um, Marvel Four, please, maybe. Who knows? Um, I know. Keep 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 on that copium, that hopium for me. But yeah, well, in the meantime, though, if this is true, November 22nd, we'll be uh, we'll be getting we'll be finally playing some Marvel. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's, uh, let's see, you know what? We've got, got time for a quick break. We got some, uh, Grand Blue we're going to be getting into it. Of course, some EWC Tekken after this guys, we're going to be taking a quick break. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We've got some, uh, polls and some questions of the week actually to ask you guys to finish that up. We actually did, did already initially ask you guys, uh, last week's episode, um, your early impressions on it. Uh, what you guys were, if you guys were feeling it, not feeling it, or just kind of reserving judgment. Uh, we got actually an overall 52% love in a direction. We'll send that to Brian. Don't worry. We'll add it on our survey. We'll even see if we can throw in a screenshot. Be like, here you go. This is what you guys thought. Uh, so it looks like we're doing pretty, or at least they're doing pretty well on that sense. And uh, for the question of the week, what do we have actually on the question last week? Oh, yeah, actually, in name, uh, speaking of tag fighters, we did get to highlight probably the biggest of mods last week. Uh, of course, we're talking about Max's MBCI, uh, Infinite and Beyond. Infinite Is it Infinite Beyond or Infinite and Beyond? Uh, Infinite uh, Beyond. It's Infinite and Beyond. I want to say into Infinity and Beyond every time. Um, that, that had to have been intentional. But we asked you guys, uh, is the mod enough for you to pick up MVCI again. Uh, is this enough to kind of get you back into the uh, into the game if you played it? Or is it enough to interest you now that it looks the way that it does, as well as with things like the balance patches to actually get involved? Uh, we had a bunch of you guys answer up here. And of course, in our Discord, uh, Hora, Hora Lux said, to be honest, I'm not a fan of the look of this version better than it actually is, but to me, it should just embrace pure anime shading and not this cell shaded, but with real lighting uh, deal. Too many effects going on for me personally. Plus, I just don't like the gameplay. Okay. Hey, you know what? Being real, it's like, does it look better? Absolutely. I, I, I think, you know, you can say, you know, art is, is subjective, but I think objectively, I think the game does look better. Some people may, I guess, like the realistic side, but I think overall, this is looking better than it did before. But just, you know, the gameplay might not still stick with everybody. Uh, Tay2K says, uh, so Max's mod was what made me actually buy the game again on PC. I bought it when it came out on PS4, but I ended up refunding it in favor for Dragon Ball Fighters. Nice. Good, good change in investment there, I would say at the time. <coughs> I've been playing with some friends and the gameplay is so much fun. Active Switch is an amazing mechanic and I hope it returns in a later game. This game is high key underrated. underrated. Max's mod is going to revive this game for sure. I mean, yeah, it already got you to buy another unit. So more of a reason why I don't think Capcom's going to have any problems with uh, him doing what he's doing right now. Oh, they'll find a way. No. <laughs> man, what do you man, think this, this ain't is? Nintendo. Yeah. This ain't Nintendo. Or like, Disney. Relax. Yeah, yeah. Like, Capcom's like, yeah, sure. Fuck it. Go for you're it. Right, you're right. I know. Don't but, you remember Capcom hates modders? Mm. I know. The inter I know. I know. That's the other. That, that is very true. We did. We did cover that. That internally Capcom calls all modders actual cheaters. I don't know, bro. 
I don't know. Y'all just gotta just just let it just let it be. Y'all, you guys know what you had. You guys know what you did. We we all remember Chun Li. We're just trying to make people forget it and, and play the game. We're trying to have fun. Terrible. Uh, let me see. And then uh, we got one last one actually from Ginger Filth. I got the game way too late and realized how much fun it was. This looks amazing to me and feels so refreshing. I'm game to diving back into MBCI. You never know how hype it can get with a fresh face and new people looking at it in a new light. You're not wrong. Absolutely not wrong. Um, clearly with someone like Max behind it and, and pushing it and well, I mean, not even pushing it. It's, it's his mod uh, with his reach and his and his influence is definitely going to give a revival as to what level of revival that is. We don't know. We don't know. Well, we'll, we'll just have to see. But hey, just to put on that mark right now, the game is trending upwards on Steam charts. Oh, so that's just uh, on Steam. Well, you do that's know, just on Steam. you do know they had a tournament or they had an exclusive tournament with some of, uh, I think it was like t 32 players or like specifically 16 mm -hmm. players or something oh. like that. They brought in, I didn't know about the tournament, but I saw like the exhibition you did with yeah, like high, with like high I thought level that was players. What it was. Yeah, I think I guess that oh, was okay. an exhibition. I thought that's it was a tournament, but uh, yeah, they did that. I thought it was pretty cool. I watched a little bit of the clips and stuff and all the findings. People were finding with like Hulk and... I think it's cool. It's reinvigorating. Oh, yeah. I I feel like it's UMVC three all over again, where they got the the mods, but this is a little bit more fixated and focused on uh making the game better. Well, again, it, the the patch is live that they put for yeah, the yeah. moves, just not the mm -hmm. mods themselves as of yet. So, which is cool. People are people are relearning the game and yeah, stuff like that, making Black Panther really good. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I All also right. think two XKO uh, might help this game too right now because people are going to go back. Dude, play tag, tag fighters, games. tag fighter stock overall is up, man. And if you're, if you're playing fighting it's 2016 games, tag all over again. Go. Yeah. All right, and we've got one more character to get into before we talk some EWC. So we got a uh, another gameplay, or rather, more of a character, uh, more of a character guy that got dropped just yesterday. Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising versus Sia. AKA big old uh, uh, red red mommy that we all saw in that one trailer uh, that got dropped uh, during Evo. Uh, we got, finally got a breakdown of her kit. And sure enough, she's also an install character. You just found out what an install character is. This is also another one. Uh, she is probably the largest character in the game. I don't know if, um, what's her man's name? Is it Vasaraga, right? Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's, that's the grappler. Uh, I think she might have dwarfed some, at least in height. No, not, definitely not in width, but definitely in, uh, I want to say in height. Uh, she's huge, and she is a sonar, it seems. She's just like, kind of weird hybrid. Like, yeah, like, she is effective everywhere. So, we got a breakdown on her, on her kit. Uh, it was a pretty cool, like, just a quick nine minute, no, almost ten minute, actually, actual video. Just breaking her down. Yeah, she's got an install mechanics called uh, Celestial Dominion. Basically, at any point, you know, uh, every character has, like, a unique action in that game. Her unique action is, like, she just, like, buffs, or rather, she installs. She has a little indicator underneath her, her health bar that shows it. And what this does, it allows her to kind of have a follow-up on all her regular, like, special moves. So, like, her fireball, because she has a fireball. She now has an actual, like, if she has this buff, you can actually then press it during the fireball and she then does an additional action with it. Some of these actions allow her to extend combos and some of these actions allow her to be safe or even potentially plus and keep offense uh, going. Um, that's kind of the way you, you make this work for like an install character is that without it, they're really kind of like a half character maybe even a three-quarter character like they are still a character they're still effective they can still do things but maybe not to the the best right so you have to be able to like maybe knock down your opponent and give them time to install or to do a stance or something like that like traditionally like that's how install characters work because that's a way to balance them because these follow-ups that she gets dog kind of fucking insane <laughs> kind of yeah. fucking insane the dermamo like, pillar was crazy this pillar exactly is... the Oof. pillar move deadly flare she has the ability like to just you know hey yeah. vertical hitbox you're in super boom here Yuri and Super, uh, Shang Tsung freaking floor skulls, whatever you want to call it. Like, she has it. She can rezone with that. Um, she has follow ups with it as well to keep her plus on it. EX version of it. Tracks. It's, it's potent. That, that was like where they led off with. And it was like three and a half minutes of explaining that. I'm like, bro, 
this character is big and she's going to zone like all right she's gonna have she's gonna have to have like Fuzzy. there's no way she has an anti-air or something right nope nimbus anti-air three different angles and uh she gets to um with her install she gets to like do like a basically like jump cancel right is what it is like it's not a jump cancel because you're actually not jumping but she gets to like follow up with it uh because she can then air combo if she catches you and then just take you to the corner or just cash out on damage which i was like god damn like once again that's only if you have the install if you don't have the install you don't have that access so that's once again it's how you balance right uh and uh she has leo's um Leo's uh, what's called first cold breeze. I don't know if you knew. That's like what the German, what the actual like translation to his German move is, where he does like the berserker slash. Uh, yeah, she has that basically. It's just a safe version at low, a more punishable version at medium and heavy. And at first, when I saw it teleport, because the ultimate version, she just like teleports and just lunges at you. I was like, there's her neutral skip. I was like, there we go. There's there's the huh huh. What are you gonna do? What am I gonna do? Bam! I'm in your face. Um, no, apparently it's it's not. You can actually like fireball it. You can actually press a button and just smack her out of it. So she's not she's not cutting through anything. So I was like, okay, cool. You had the bounce because if she didn't have that, if she was uninteractable during that, I was like, that's fucking insane. Like you're fuck just gonna that? like blow up everybody that has a projectile. It just does not matter. Now you're effective anywhere on the screen for any kind of whiffing, any kind of anything. Um, that would be insane. But no. They are like we we can't have that. Hmm. They, they, you can punch her. You can hit her on. Is so. it me or does she? She reminds me of Justice, a little bit. I just know a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, yeah, Big Mama's red house, hair, blue I mean, lady. Yeah, Demetresca, not red hair, blue hair. Know? Excuse me. Uh, the Good. huge tail. Good call like, out. But Good not call just out. that because of the claws and the. Because uh, I mean, there's just well again the beams, the yeah. mouth beams. Yeah, but I mean, uh, what's it called? Justice doesn't need any installs. I mean. She has access True. to everything. She is the yeah. install. Yeah, she is. Yeah, I am the. We don't talk about the grenades. That that's I wonder. I, play. A part, a part, a part of me is like, Arxis is like, okay, we can't put justice maybe outright in Guilty Gear Strive. Um, what if we just put her over here and see how people feel about her? And then if people are like, yo, this character is dope, they're like, all right, cool. That guy's like, give I her got two green, more like, arms. Bringing her, bringing her back. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, and then. Last but not least, she has the fireball, and it's a pretty interesting fireball because it just like kind of slows down depending on the the strength. But um, yeah, she's she's potent. TLDR, she's Domamu on crack. So I did mention earlier a term that I'm sure Ja was like, "What is a fuzzy?" So <laughs> so for for fuzzy guarding, I believe that's when you can sort of instant overhead. Well, that's another term. You can <laughs> do a, a an overhead that's on a standing opponent is that correct am i am instantly. i right or wrong yes instantly i mean she's tall Thanks, enough Spencer. that Thanks. she can be she can she's tall enough that she can be sort of tricked into the the sprite being standing but being hit overhead am i more or less on the right page yeah. okay, so thanks. a fuzzy guard is like yeah it's like when you um say you you are blocking a character you're blocking like standing up or whatever um, the fuzzy guard is like the character is still standing up, but you actually can block low or high at that moment. And literally, it's it's a choice, like you said, it's a choice on the uh, the player who's actually attacking on whether or not they're gonna go high with an overhead or an instant overhead, like you said, or a low. It's just the animation doesn't show right. until you actually like do it. Um, but that's that's what that means. It's it's a fuzzy guard because it literally is a choice, um, and it's just yeah, it, it happens only in certain situations whenever you can put people in that kind of lock state where like oh you you're stand blocking but you actually are, can be blocking low and that's the fuzzy that's where you like have to take the guess yeah. um because she's so freaking tall she is going to more than likely be very susceptible to that um so but that's that, yeah. that that's always been that's always been the price of being big in, in fighting games. and it was very prominent in dragon ball fighters until i believe they took that out because yeah, they're like it was no. a lot of we want Gogeta and we want uh, Broly to be super good, you know. Yeah, it's it's in a lot of fighting games. Uh, your Street Fighters have it. Even even Street Fighter Six still has it with like instant instant overhead. Like you know when you up back and you just go with like a a short or a jab, whatever is like kind of almost like the lowest profile air button they can do. You can 
basically do an instant overhead on certain characters. Um, but yeah, that's that's like some deep stuff, man. That like that gets that gets several layers in. Uh, but all you have to know is that if your character is tall, you are more susceptible to it. Right. Uh, she is gonna be coming out also Tomorrow. by the time you hear this on the twentieth. Damn, man! Everybody just decided to coordinate, and start putting out some yeah. characters, huh? Smart yeah, guy. because nothing came out after Evo, so you better. Yeah, it's, who, who's we're, the we're, first to the party? Yeah, we're starting to uh, we're starting to ramp up. Uh, but yeah, so so Grand Blue, not only is she going to be coming out, but of course the big patch that's coming as well, uh, that's going to be just hitting all cast. It's it's going to be it's going to be mayhem. It's going to be fun, oh, oh. and it's also going to be cheap because I don't know if you saw some of the other things examples they showed where like things like two B can now combo off of grab. Yes. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Sorry. Sorry. Let me. Let me do, say that again. <laughs> she can combo out a grab now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Just wanted to make sure y'all y'all understood that. Um. I was. I saw that. I was like, wow. They're Side games is like, you know what? Fuck it. The but game's doing great. Have fun. Have Go fun. Nuts. You'll need it against this cat. This new character. I'm yeah. Sure. You'll need it. Let's just shake it all up. I, I was like, you know what? I was Her like, finisher has respect. Nine hundred ninety-nine hits. I'm like that, that hits, combo yeah. is not ending. <laughs> yeah, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sick. It's pretty sick. Um, but yeah, versus Sia, she'll be out tomorrow, or by the time you guys are hearing this, on the twentieth. We'll see how she stands up with the rest of the cast, as well as uh, the changes that are going to be coming with them. All right, in the meantime, let's peep out, man. This weekend, what else do we have to look forward to? We've got some EWCs, I'm Esports World Cup, but this time for some good ass Tekken. Uh, we had the last chance qualifiers that happened just last weekend, obviously. And now we have our group stages that have been posted up. You guys can check it out on their Twitter or on awesome pages such as Liquipedia for that. Out of the last chance qualifier, we had four qualifying members. Uh, oh man, I'm gonna butcher some of these names. No, no disrespect to nobody. I'm about to just say. Uh, well, let's go with first names. Uh, for fourth place, we got Hafiz. Uh, third place, Saja Saja Well. I'm, I'm gonna get so butchered on this. Uh, Owl, coming from Japan, and then Usama for first place. So those guys all qualified. Um, yeah, I didn't I didn't realize uh, who was actually who made it at eighth place there, Gabe, until you were talking about it before the show. Man, JDCR got worked apparently. My goodness, some dude named something brother just beat him with uh, Shaheen. Was wrecked. The fan, the fan really brother. Good. Yeah, yeah. He's hard to What's fight. Up? Not a lot of people play him. I know. Uh, there was I mean, two. There was two representing uh, Shaheem in this yeah. in this uh, bracket. Unfortunately, they both were just outside of fourth place, so they didn't get a chance to qualify. Shaheen is a problem. I mean, you've got the, the Shaheen and Dragonov seem to be the most, I think, overplayed. Not overplayed, but like when I see him on the screen, I'm like, oh, okay, they're probably gonna win. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we got the we we got the group stages all all laid out. Um, just a quick reminder for you guys: this is uh, the first phase of the tournament. It's going to be GSL style. So there's eight groups, four players. Basically, the top two of each group they're going to proceed on to the second phase, and the second phase does the same thing, just with four groups instead of eight, until we get to a single elimination bracket. So you have two chan uh, two chances to make it out. You don't have to have the perfect record, but you have to have a better record than two other people in your group in order to continue. Uh, yeah, groups A through H are locked in, including our last chance qualifiers, uh, which I think our first place winner, Usama, actually made it to group D. We have to play Yagami and Mulgold as well as Ni. Nee. That's, That's gonna be fun. Yeah, I always I always laugh about it when that happens. When like, yeah, like I won the last chance. Like, yes, I'm number one here. Congratulations. Now you have to fucking face <laughs> the gods. You, you, know, you know what this really <laughs> Congrats is. Congrats to you. Let me just hand you your ass real quick. Not to say he's just gonna get his ass whooped, but man, is this stacked. I, I feel like this is just basically the Olympics for fighting games. Mm. I mean, outside, once again, outside of how Evil turned out, this is, for these two games specifically, yeah. is the highest caliber play you're going to find um, yeah, this year. Yeah, it's like, more invitational. I can, I can see that, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's, that's I mean, all I got. Like I said, Damn. I just feel like it's the closest we're going to get to what the Olympics is for fighting games. Like all, well, sorry, not fighting games, for games overall. Let me re re restate that. You did hear that they are officially doing like an esports Olympics. I was literally going to bring it up. I'm like, bro, is that <laughs> still, you, that's still happening? Did you right? miss that news, This was it. They're doing an e-Olympics or 
video game. I don't even know what they're uh, officially calling it, but the oh, ILC. I I do get the E out. <laughs> yeah, and they're like really random ass games, aren't they? Like the, it's like very strange the the game choices. But I will wait and see what this E Olympics is. Okay, you know they might be on. They might be doing Excel and Word documents. Sorry, right? I, I don't know. Yet. That's a thing. There is. An I know Excel it is. Championship. That's why I, I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah, that that's is. A, it's, yeah, it's, it's gonna, gonna be like, that up, y'all listeners out there. If y'all don't believe us, it's trust. Gonna go look be it up. like Excel championships. It's gonna be like break dancing, and then they would not get invited. Stop. Oh, do not. Do not. God. Okay, Bro, we'll I, talk about that later. Don't bring that <laughs> shit. Up. So so anyway, back to back to some Tekken eight. Um. Yeah, just like just like in Street Fighter Six, guys, like it'd be d damn difficult. You know, normally in tournaments we're like, oh yeah, who who are we looking out for? Or who you think is gonna win? Me. Or rather, who do you want to win? Me. Even even the people I want to win, I'm like, bro, that is fucking tough. Because first of all, I just want to put it out there, America is free in Tekken. We all know this. Unfortunately, look, look, it's wait, wait, wait. Jimmy J Trans coming back. All right, he's starting his he started he started playing again. That's cool. He I don't really see him on here. Home. We're just gonna have to wait. I don't see him here. So that's that's where I'm going on right now. America is free. We did get, I think, uh, only like one representative in the last chance qualifier that made it to top eight, I believe. Let me just double check my ink right there. Uh, yeah, uh, Shadow 20, uh, 20 ounce made it uh, in seventh and eighth, right? Just, just tied with JDCR. This is gonna be a stacked ass tournament. Uh, I honestly don't know. Like I'm a fan of Nobi. Uh, Arsenal Nash, obviously current EVO champ, killing it. Right, um, <laughs> Chikorin. Who, who else? Like you were just talking knee earlier. The some of the some of the go to guys, low high. Like anybody here is 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 gonna to rock out. The big, but the biggest thing I want to see really out of all this is like how filled those seats are gonna be. Because mm. we did a lot of talking about how Street Fighter Six. Like don't get me wrong, Street Fighter Six is played world, you know, worldwide. You know, they, we'll, we'll you see. go anywhere, you know, you can do a Hadouken and someone's going to know what it is. But like Tekken, you know, Saudi Arabia and Tekken Middle East. That's I you think know, it's, it's, big, it's you really right? between it's between them and Korea. That's what we're looking at. There are some other players here, obviously representing other countries. Awesome. But we know where the sites are. So I want to see how people turn out in the in 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 uh in those seats when we see the production. We're going to see if it's good. We're going to see more camera shots of the of the audience. I guarantee it. So we're going to talk about the stacked because holy Arsenal Ash. <laughs> yeah, like it's it is not going to be easy to, to point out who who's going to end up winning this. Um, but there is definitely a lot of pressure, especially. Yeah, like like you're going to have home court advantage. But like I feel like Arsenal Ash is going to have like like he clearly I mean, Evil Champ clearly going to have even more pressure on uh, here. It's going to sound weird. Um, and, and this is not in any way to kind of, you know, uh, to, to to pick on him or in any way, because he is also a champ. But, you know, how, like, you know, Punk won Evo and then they go into this tournament and just like lost like round one, which was a surprise to a lot of people, including I think probably present company included. They were like, yo, it's the Evo champ. He's having his year. Probably doesn't care about this as much. And I think he's like, he's like, he's, I think he's already been very vocal that he's taking it easy. But then Arsenal and Ashford, who's also has won Tekken 8 this year. Evo Champ is the number one guy. He's got the biggest target on his back. He has a stop. And is home at home court. It's like, that's, that's, I was like, that's pressure. Yeah. That is pressure. Um, but the, the, you know, does that take him out the running? Absolutely not. Right. Absolutely my, not. My thing about Arsenal is that I think nobody can figure him out. I think Punk and Big Bird were figured out in their matches. And mm. like, remember, we were saying that Japan was just like, yeah, we figured them out. We're going to that's all we're going to focus on. And we took them out early now because NL won, but still got <laughs> eliminated mm, even yeah. out of the after the LCQ. But uh, yeah. Ash going against Olsan and John Ding and Edge. Uh, John Ding deserves to be there, but he's 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 it's going to be never seen right him now. win something. Yeah. Well, no, he, he plays this really well. The problem is it's going to be hard for him to win with, I guess, if he is using Eddie. I think Eddie's in a weird place right now where other characters are just hella strong. So it depends if he still plays it, right? You know, we got to see if it, if he plays it through, if he plays a secondary like he did in Tekken 7 when there was matchups that Eddie just couldn't deal with. Yeah, but I'm I'm liking There's Chikorin. A lot of strong I'm liking low high. Um Farzine is in there too. I believe I've seen Farzine's name around. And yes. Nii is in a group Farzine. of AK. Yeah, AK. And AK yeah. is going to be kind of gross. Yeah. So, Rangshu is in so, there too. 
so it's it, like i said it's gonna be a a coin toss this this first set are you know the, the first phase is really gonna I, there's no doubt we're gonna get upsets i would hope we get upsets it's gonna make right. it even more interesting I, I think i should just say this real quick you do understand Far farzine is like the person who put like the beating on arslan at one point mm -hmm. yeah i just know farzine is farzine was second place i believe at evo no We'll double check on that. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I remember there was a uh, one of these matches. It was just like a straight three zero. Like uh, seeing a three zero so dominant at Evo. Uh, I believe. Um, I think it was the losers finals. Whatever it was, was just like bananas. I'm, I'm gonna make sure I know which player I'm talking about. No, that was Atif. But Farzine no, has. Okay. Yeah, say. but Farzine yeah. has actually done really, really well in Tekken Seven against um, Arsenal. But it's a new game. Mazda, what do you mean? Don't, this don't is a different him. game. Hey, we said that about... Oh, we said it's a new game. Guess who won this year again? Arslan. But, yeah, true that. True. You're not, you know what? You're not wrong. You are not wrong. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I still got, you know, hands out for, like, uh, guys like Nobi. Once again, he did get third place uh, at Evo um, as well. He did did very, very well. And also, I used his, uh, his, his ball top. One of the few... Players out there have like a specific ball top. I don't know if y'all know that, like the Nobi top mm. that's manufactured out there. It's really nice, but uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be stacked. I don't know who really to 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 even not even say vote for, but like who to cheer on because it's all gonna be fun. It's all gonna be entertaining. We're gonna win. We're gonna win, and you, the listener, is also going to win when you guys check this out. So the first phase of it is gonna be starting this Wednesday on the twenty first. Uh, 1700 UTC plus three time. So that's more or less, uh, that's gonna be rocking out until the 23rd where it actually concludes on the Friday. So it's like just in the midweek. Um, I'm not sure if that's just cause it's like colliding with anything else World Cup related, but I don't remember if Street Fighter was like in the middle of the week as well. There might be a World Tour tournament that they're trying to not cross pass yeah. with. Which also, hey, you know, what, uh, you, you know what? Good, good call out on that. Cause this also does uh, give out uh, Point uh, for the weird. world tour, I believe. I yeah, think yeah. That's you, weird you get, you do. get. If you win, if you win this, let me just make sure I got this right here. Tekken eight, you get. Uh, oh, these are the. Sorry, these are the club points. What am I thinking? Uh, for for this, because obviously the club points for EWC in general is also what a lot of these orgs are going after because they get a, a cut after all this. But yeah, first place. Not only do you get the three hundred thousand smackaroos USD. Uh, you get a thousand uh, e uh, EWC club points to push towards the organization there um, and then see who gets that payout. Because Remember, this is still sticking on that one million dollar payout for uh, for the top 32, all 32 players. Oh. Yeah, overall, that's going to be uh, that's going to be fun. But the big payout obviously happens from the first to eighth place. Uh, yeah, so we're just gonna have to wait and see. That's happening this week once again, 21st of August. That's happening at EWC underscore fighters on Twitch and EWC on YouTube as well. Make sure you guys go check that out. You're on for your favorite Tekken player. Just go watch some good ass Tekken regardless. Like I said, I'm gonna be watching the stands. I wanna see how many people show out and show up for some Tekken. Cause yeah, it's like I said, home, home, uh, homegrown advantage to some of these players here. Well, we'll see if that affects them in the meantime. But uh, let me see. Actually, oh, yeah. One last thing, guys, before we actually do wrap up, though, I do have a quick question for y'all. Uh, this actually came out from one of our awesome uh, Discord members going into their first tournament. I'm not going to put them out there, but going to their first tournament. They needed some tips. It got me thinking uh, real hard about it. And uh, I wanted to ask you guys, if you could improve one aspect of your game, in other words, your skill, your ability in fighting games, what would it be? And I know it seems kind of broad, but it's like, hey, could it be your defense? Could it be your offense? Could it be your knowledge checks? Could it be, I don't know, your uh, your, your general tournament nerves? Any of that. If there's any aspect of it in, com in competition, in fighting games that you could improve, what would that be? Make sure to let us know. We'll be posting that up on all social media platforms, as well as on YouTube, as well as on our Discord. Uh, we want to hear from you guys because I'm interested to see. And also, good luck to uh, to our awesome Discord member that's going to be going out to their first tournament this weekend to go, obviously, win. Like, just going to go win. Like, it's pretty obvious. Street yeah. Fighter Six. It's easy. It's easy. You got it. You got it. He's been in the game for a long time. He's got it. Throw a Hadouken, a couple anti-airs. You're in there. 
But with that, guys, that's going to be it for this week's episode. We appreciate y'all hanging out with us for another episode of Double Tap. Remember, guys, we are taking submissions for community segments, questions or topics, anything you want to talk about here on the show with us. Make sure to hit us up, of course, on all social media as well. You can hit us up on our email, uh, double tap at mash.gg. Go ahead. Just go say hi. Let us know what you want to get into and we'll get something arranged. And I mean, in the meantime, though, you guys make sure to follow my awesome host here. You can check out Meza at Meza FGC on all social media platforms as well as on Twitch. Yeah. Uh to- Two X KO is over. What are you? What are you even doing? What do you even do? With well, your I gotta hands? go back to streaming DFO, of course. Uh, uh, okay, but okay. I might find time to maybe. I don't know, man. I gotta find something to play for the time being. I'm gonna, I gotta. I gotta wait for Nin Impact. I gotta wait for all these itchy games that I want to play. But I, I think I'm probably just gonna play some first descendants and uh, maybe stream some of that. Yeah, you know, get a little there bit of go. variety. Why not? Look at him. Wait, why do you give me that look? I don't support Nexon like I, that, Ja. Like I, I mean, I oh, do, oh but I don't. God. But he's like, nah, bro. <laughs> it's just not a Diablo great game. Ford. That's all. Like, oh my God. <laughs> you're Stop wasting your life and your this. talent, Meza. Your did you play Destiny? Did you play but, Destiny? I did. I did. Past tense. Past tense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we all got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> you did play Overwatch as well, right? You know. It also passed tense. <laughs> Once again, did. <laughs> Stati- <laughs> Make sure to check out Static Grill, of course, at Static Grill on all social media platforms as well as on Twitch. What are you playing well, besides Marvel, I guess? I'm eventually going to start Black Myth Wukong. That looks pretty good. Look at this guy. Okay. Finally, a one player game again. You know, you're, not diver- you're, not, you're, not, you're not diverse enough in your, uh, in your gameplay, uh, in, in your game selection, Static. Yeah. I'm sorry. El- where's Elden enough. Ring? I want to see you suffer. Um. No. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Say no. Say no to to the Dark Souls games, people. Uh, you can ch- also check out. We got love for all the Dark Souls guys. Check out uh, Ja at Josh Adamus, of course, on Twitter as well as on Blue Sky. Absolutely. There you go. And you can check me out. Crash tag. Uh, Crash tag versus. I am Crash tag. At Crash tag versus, of course, on Twitter. But make sure to follow the show at Double Tap FGC on Twitter. Uh, TikTok on YouTube, go subscribe. We do post up the video version of this podcast as well as some shorts, little cuts, you know, here and there, as well as uh, some uh, some some content that we'll be posting up as well. So make sure to go subscribe over there and make sure to join our Discord at doubletap.gg forward slash Discord. Come say what's up. Come uh, hang out with our awesome Discord members. Come get involved. Question of the week. Post up some articles that you guys may want us to discuss or talk about there on the Discord. We'll bring it up on the show. We love talking about this stuff. We love what you guys bring to the table. And it's much appreciated. And hey, you can also support the show free of charge by liking, retweeting the show. when We get a new episode up as well as on your favorite podcast platform of choice. Make sure to leave a review, a comment. It all helps. Let us know what we're doing right. So we keep on doing it and let us know what we're doing wrong. So we can go back to the training, uh, go back to training mode and come back even stronger on that matchup. But that is going to be it for us this week. We appreciate y'all for hanging out with us. We're going to be make sure we're going to have a new episode next week talking about EWC results as well as whatever comes through. And we're going to talk about in the fighting game community. But until then, straight. See y'all next week. Peace.